Hello, this is Rosemary Anderson speaking to you from my home in Oregon. Having just finished rereading Ken Wilber's Integral Psychology, I want to make a few remarks. First, I want to acknowledge and respect the enormity and comprehensiveness of his work in general and as synthesized in this particular book, Integral Psychology. It's enormous, and this is a great gift to the field of integral psychology and also transpersonal psychology. The comprehensiveness, the completeness, the thoroughness in which he reviews the literature is really quite amazing. And the charts at the end of the book are, are fabulous. They are fabulous resources for any researcher in transpersonal psychology. I refer to them again and again because he summarizes over a hundred developmental theories and compares them by stages. There are developmental theories not on the list, uh, which I am aware of, at least 12 or so, including my own called the body map. Nonetheless, I can compare my understanding of the spiritual development with these other models and see how Wilbur synthesizes and contrasts one model with another. This is a fabulous resource. I also want to say, and maybe this is addressed personally to Ken Wilbur, if he listens to this recording, is that there are many people in transpersonal psychology who acknowledge and are extremely grateful to Ken Wilbur and his work. And while Ken has abandoned transpersonal psychology, there are many of us who have not abandoned him. And I would like to respectfully suggest a, a bit of a rapprochement uh, between transpersonal psychology and Ken Wilber, Wilber's a version of integral psychology. So that's my suggestion. Um, hopefully it will be received in some manner. I want to uh, say a few things about uh, the content of the book, not so much in the way of, um, you know, a, a commentary, but simply to react to certain things which I think are important to respond to. One is the tendency of Ken Wilber and a number of other people in the field of at least transpersonal psychology to set up what I call straw man issues, issues to fight about, which don't necessarily need to be fought about, but could be seen as complementary or parallel. There are many things in my life over time that I have just simply allowed to stand and remain respectful of the fact that they don't align with my own ideas or my own theories and simply allow them to be until some resolution comes about or some ability to balance two different approaches as my own spiritual development uh, progresses over time. And I would like to recommend this to a lot of transpersonal psychologists that uh, there, there often is a way in which issues are set up as in conflict when they don't need to be. An example of that in Ken Wilber's work is his way of engaging uh, Michael Washburn Burn, Michael Washburn. I, um, I think there's a way in which infant spirituality can be seen as both a state, as Ken Wilber suggests, and as a valid spiritual experience on its own right, as Michael Washburn suggests. I think they're both true. And this is just an example of the way things could be understood in complementary um, manner rather than one thing or the other and that they are distinct. For example, in my own experience, I had experiences in childhood that I remember very uniquely as unique and glorious and refined or something along those lines. I didn't have language for it as a child but I allowed them to stand as they were, and I can still remember them quite vividly, now 50, almost 60 years later. So I think it might have been a state, 
It might have been a valid spiritual experience. Since that time, I have had many like experiences in adulthood. So I'm not so sure that the distinction between state and valid uh, childhood spiritual experience is necessarily so absolute one or the other. I think there's a way in which there's some rapprochement here to be had. I'd like to go on and talk about one of the things that I think is extraordinary about Ken Wilber's work, as well as the work of Carl Jung, Jorge Freer, and to some extent Laszlo, is that they understand uh, in a very comprehensive way what Ken Wilber calls the morphogenetic field, morphogenetic field, or developmental stages as they are enacted in human history over time, and that these are progressive. We are developing as a species, uh, a species consciousness is what I would call it. Uh, Carl Jung uh, used what is probably an analogous term for a similar or experience, which is the collective unconscious, which is the uh, aggregate or the accumulation of human experiences that accounts for a kind of ability to tap in to these collective experiences by anyone, by any human being. Jorge Freer or uses uh, what I think is an analogous term for uh, is uh, enacted events. That human beings, as they enact, enact events over time, allow for certain experiences to be readily accessible to others. And it could be a similar thing that um, Laszlo is talking about in Akashic Fields. And others have used that term, of course, too, over history. I tend to use a term something like human consciousness or our species consciousness, that over time we do develop as a species. And as we enact and as we act out different kinds of levels of awareness and develop, there is a progression uh, over time that allows other people to tap into those experiences and then therefore they become more accessible. For example, even in my lifetime, which seems you know very short uh, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, I have seen a progression from what I see as a, the dominant mode of being concerned with ego development and achievement to a greater accessibility of what I would call heart consciousness, which is a higher level of development. My own personal history, this seemed to be uh, very actively engaged in the 60s and the, the whole movement of experimenting with lots of forms of spirituality uh, that is often you know, described as the Woodstock generation. I'm a member of the Woodstock generation. It was a very exciting time. And it initiated, uh, I think, at least in the United States and especially on the West Coast, a capacity to uh, enter into heart consciousness more easily. Therefore, the jump in spirituality has shifted forward, if you will, that it used to be that it was easy to move from early stages of childhood and teenage and adult achievement development, and then difficult to jump to heart consciousness. Now that jump is shorter to heart consciousness, and the, the new jump or the bigger jump is to the next level of development, which has a more soulful containment or is more soulful enactment. And so that's now the jump. So when we look at uh, things like spiritual development, we have to remember that every human being is within this morphogenetic field, as Ken Wilber refers to it, and that uh, we are a part of history and we can enter into these various levels of spiritual development, uh, depending on, in a many way, many ways, the people who have already enacted them before us. And we then can be a part of the future enactment of other human beings. Thank you very much for listening.